I had a former pastor say something one time that has really stuck with me. He said, once you start to tolerate a sin, you will eventually begin to accept it. And then before you know it, you won't even recognize it as a sin and you will participate in it or even glorify it, completely dismiss it as something to be concerned about. That has been a statement that has stuck with me for more than 15 years now because I've often found myself because I love a specific individual or because it's something that I enjoy doing that you start to justify the reason why it's not that bad. And compared to someone else, I'm not that bad or they're not that bad. Or this person in my life is participating in a certain activity, but I love them so much that I refuse to call it for what it is because I want to keep them in my life. You even justify it from a Christian standpoint and say, well, if I completely shut that door or if I completely call them out on something, then it may shut that door. And if I'm not having conversations with them, then they will miss Christ completely. And so it's so easy to justify that and to behave in that way or just quickly go down that slippery slope. Hey, y'all. Welcome back and happy Monday. It's Monday, so you guys know what that means. It's another episode of Monday School. If you are new here, my name is Kelly. I am a mom of five, four of which still live at home. I am a full-time respiratory therapist. I work two different night shift jobs. I homeschool two of my kids, and I am a wife to an amazing man. And the point of Monday School is to just tell you something that stood out in my sermon from yesterday so that I can share the word of God with as many people for as long as possible. Because I love Jesus. I love God. I love the Holy Spirit. I just have this feeling that I can't explain and I want everyone else to experience God. And so the point of Monday School is to just share a little tidbit about what I learned from the sermon. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so this week at church, the sermon was about Psalm 1. And if I was to just wrap it up, because it's only six verses, so if I was to quickly describe it, it would be the righteous, like the characteristics of a righteous man versus the characteristics of a wicked man. And I know those terms sound really churchy and really judgmental. Basically, righteous is just someone who is following the will of God, then wicked is someone who's following the will of the world. So when you're putting God first, you're considered to be the righteous man. And when you're putting your wants, your needs, and the world and kind of like that selfish attitude first, then that is what is considered the wicked. And so what really stood out to me in this was the first verse because it so closely relates to what the pastor said that I talked about at the very beginning of this podcast. And so I'm going to read it to you. So Psalm 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. So we have walking, standing, and sitting. So as Christians, we want to be walking with the Lord. That looks different for everyone, but essentially you are striving to have a relationship with God. Reading his Bible, praying, meditating on the word, learning about him. Honestly, it starts with the habit of reading your Bible and everything else just starts to unfold from there. So as Christians, we want to be walking and we need to be weary of standing with sinners. And this is where it can get tricky because obviously we're all sinners and obviously we want to reach out to the unreached population or the unsaved population. And we don't want to do that judgmentally, but we want to be in the world, but not of the world. So you have to be very careful that as you are in the midst of these sinners, that you are not standing there and starting to participate in the sins that they are participating in. 
And that can look different for everyone. I mean, there's a whole plethora of things that some Christians do that other Christians don't do. And my goodness, that could be a three hour long podcast if you wanted it to be. But once you are walking with God, you have your convictions. You, you want to make sure that you're not standing still too long when you are trying to reach out to the quote unquote unchurched population. And then you definitely don't want to sit because once you sit, that means you're getting comfortable. And that's when you start participating in the activities that you shouldn't be participating in. You start acting like you are of the world and you will find yourself very quickly going from walking with God to applauding sin. It just happens so quickly if you are not diligent in what you are doing. And this verse so much relates back to what I mentioned at the very beginning where the pastor was like, you tolerate it, accept it, and then you're super comfortable with it that you don't even really recognize it as a sin and you may in fact start justifying it. So I just really want to caution you in your walk with God that you don't get comfortable around people who aren't walking with God. And before you know what you find yourself participating in things that you know break his heart and are against his will. And so my big piece of advice is meditating on the word of God. Let's see further down. But those who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in seasons and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. And so the best way to explain meditation a lot of times when we think of meditation, we think of like clearing your mind and emptying your mind of everything. But Christian meditation is filling your mind with the word of God. So when you read a verse, just think of it like a cow chewing cud. You want to chew on it all day long. You want to mull over it, marinate in it. I was in small group last night and we were talking about this. And one of my friends said, Another word for meditate could be to marinate in it. And I just love that term. But just constantly thinking about the word of God and praying about the word of God. And I promise you that the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you and will link it to other readings that you have, different experiences in your life. If you're meditating on the word of God, a specific scripture will stand out to you. But the best way to continue walking with God and not find yourself on that slippery slope of, eventually applauding sin is to continuously meditate on the word of God. And so I know this was quick. I know this was short. But what I want to challenge you to do is to read your Bible every day. And that can look very different. If you're not reading your Bible at all, strive for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Go for a chapter. If you have more time, you can find different reading plans. If you would like for me to suggest one to you, comment below and I will be happy to send you one that I like and one that I'm doing. And then just meditate on it. If that means making the scripture that day the home screen of your phone or writing it down on a note card and carrying it with you, taking a post-it note and sticking it on your computer at work, so that it's like at the forefront of your mind, you will be surprised at how quickly those things stick with you and how much you then begin to crave reading your Bible, praying, and spending time with God. So I hope you got something out of this. As always, I am not a pastor. I am simply sharing the word of God with as many people as possible for as long as possible. If you have a prayer request and you would like for me to pray for you, please comment below. There's also a link in the description box that you can send me your prayer request privately. Also, I would highly encourage you to check out my church's website in the description box below so you can hear the full sermon because there is so much more to it than just this 10 to 15 minute podcast that I have just strictly given my opinion about. Because like I said, I am not a pastor. I do not have a theological degree. Happy Monday. I look forward to seeing you next week.